Hello everyone, this is Rachel of the Library of Whispers and I'm Kate's daughter and she's very kindly allowed me to take over the channel for this reading. Some of you might recognise me because about a year ago I did some other videos alongside Kate, my mum. But today I'm going to do a solo uh, reading, just me and you. And I'm quite excited about this because I absolutely love these ology books. And today we're going to be looking at the Vampirology book. And I think we've re revisited this um, uh, with Kate in the past, but she only did a few pages, so I might sort of continue after some of the chapters that she did. But um, for today, let's take a look. So, this is Vampirology, A True History of the Fallen Ones, which I think is very, very prominent for October. And as you can see, it's quite spooky because it's uh, coming up to Halloween. And I thought that um, it might work. So, let's give this a little go. So, she's already done a few of these chapters. But I do love the illustrations. I love some of the Victorian photographs that we have. Spooky. Yes, very, very nice. So, of the vampire. We should fear vampires, for they have the power to eradicate humanity forever. The abilities of the fallen ones are supreme. They are faster, stronger and more durable than we, and many have had centuries to sharpen their skills and intellect. Their powers can be concentrated into five categories. Pouvoir, electricity, olfactron, mind control, and shape-shifting, described in the pages of a leaf. All the fall possesses something of every attribute, but each bloodline has a particular strength. Before we look at these powers in detail, it is important to discuss the anatomy of the vampire. Very little is known on this subject. The limited references I've come almost entirely from the theories of the former protectors. From their notes, I can say that vampires do not possess a heartbeat, nor can they breathe. Their vital organs do not function in a normal way. When wounded, they heal more quickly than humans. They have no need of food, nor do they perform any of the other pedestrian bodily functions with which humankind are beset, and their blood appetite is insatiable. In summary, these sources confirm that vampires are not alive. In a human sense, and that their powers far exceed. 
exceed human abilities. That sounds very scary. Oh, let's have a look at this image here. Now he does look quite spooky, doesn't he? You can see the image of a man. What does it say? Although the physical appearance of vampires is quite similar, to human anatomy, shown above, the bodily workings of the fallen ones are actually very different. Wow. The fountain of immortality flowing with blood. Now what's that about? A word on immortality. Vampires live immortal lives. This is why it is fallacious to talk of killing a fallen one. Many have feigned their own death or imitated the onset of years with clever use of costume and trickery. It is, in truth, a great challenge for any vampire to end his own life. And so a number of Belial have surrendered themselves to a protector to perform such an act. To some, immortality seems like a curse. Many Belial wish only for the peace that comes with destruction. Let's continue a bit more over here. Now I don't know if I am pronouncing some of these words correctly, but maybe you can tell me. Pouvoir. Pouvoir or strength the primary asset of vampires from the Moloch line who, when fed, are, rel are relentless. Some believe that blood taken by the Moloch doubles in protein within their veins. Others say that the structure of their muscle fibres is comparable to that of a large predator. Electricity. Electricity. Electricity is the power of quick reflexes, agility and speed of movement. This asset helps to explain why vampires are so rarely seen in their natural form. Their movements are almost too fast for the human eye. The high tension muscularity of vampires also allows them to crawl and climb where humans cannot. Scaling a wall or climbing a fence is no great task. Olfactorum. All vampires have good hearing and eyesight, but they taste only blood and are insensitive to touch. Their sense of smell, or olfactorum, however, is many thousand times stronger than that of humans. During the ritual of making, their olfactory nerve is enhanced and the synapses transmitting sensory information from their nose to their brain becomes highly sensitive. Vampires will use their sense of smell to track their prey and gorge their emotions of their victims. While 
they cannot empathise with humans in any genuine way. They can smell chemical reactions brought on by fear and elation. Here, a letter. Let's oh, wow. Let's have a look over here. Mind control. mind control is possessed in some measure by, uh, by all the fallen who systematically use their violent eyes to hypnotize their victims. Because of this power, some believe that vampires drain victims of psychic energy rather than blood. This is not true. The bow are the most adept at this skill and can hold a number of victims in thrall at one time. Below we see the five stages of mind control and the ball employed for the chosen. Note that they also use this power to lure the prey. Five stages of mind control. The vampire briefly makes its victim subject to its will whilst in its presence. That's number one. Number two. The vampire hypnotizes its victim who forgets the first encounter entirely. Number three. At the next encounter, the vampire instructs the victim to perform a single task. The first feed usually occurs here. Number four. The chosen is entirely controlled by the vampire whenever it is present. At this point, the second feed is carried out. Once the ritual of making is complete, a newly made vampire is controlled by its master during an initial teething stage. Following this, a progeny may rebel against its master, although most remain devoted for eternity. She looks scary, doesn't she? The eyes and her teeth. Few will escape the magnetism of the vampire's violet eyes. Wow. Famous fallen and their powers. So we have a few people we can talk about here. Those that have fallen to the vampires. Magnetism. Achilles destroyed 1200 BC. The Greek demigod Achilles was one of history's greatest warriors and a moloch. When the Greek armies besieged the city of Troy, the apparently invincible Achilles was their ruthless companion, Attila the Hun, destroyed AD 453. Attila the Hun was a moloch who could wrestle ten men and rip off their heads with his bare hands. Attila and his armies raided east west and south, leading a trail of carnage and slaughter. Of 
according to the history books, Attila died of a nosebleed on the night of his marriage to Ildiko. I don't know if I've pronounced that right. Ildiko. This remains doubt un- this remains doubtful. It is more likely that his bride used an intimate moment to to the dead sedate a new husband until a protector could destroy him. Elizabeth Balfrey destroyed sixteen fourteen the sixteenth century Belial Elizabeth Balfrey needed only to kiss a victim to track and kill him afterwards. Balfrey lived at Kajdeef, Kajdeef, Kajdeef. Not sure how you pronounce that. Kajdeef Castle, a gift from her husband, and terrorised the local people, committing hundreds of horrible murders. She often tortured her victims for days before killing them. Ooh. Rasputin, believed to be at large. Sources tell me that the mad monk Rasputin is determined to use his powers of mind control to gain the favour of the powerful elite in Russia. Some say that he has his attention turned towards the Romanovs. Only time will tell what havoc this ball will cause. He must be destroyed before any damage can be done. Wow, they the photos. Oh, I love scholars of the supernatural accept legends of creatures changing or shape-shifting as true. I can confirm that this power belongs to its potency to vampires alone. No other creature has the power to shape. The shape-shift into a whole menagerie of beasts, though some such as the werewolf, can shift between a human and a wolf. Vampires, in particular, the Belial, can take many different forms for many different purposes and pursuits. The practice of shape-shifting. The Belial are the greatest practitioners of this art and the most adept. They are also the only bloodline that can shape shift into mythical creatures such as dragons and gryphons as pictured. In contrast, the Moloch and the Baal have more limited power but can still change into the form of large predators such as leopards, or small creatures, such as mice or bats. Below are the many purposes for which vampires of all bloodlines exercise this power. The pleasure of flight. All vampires relish the thrill of flight, travelling as a bird can be more effective and exhilarating form of locomotion than the more pedestrian method of running. However, fast upon this ground, the Balliol in particular are experts at shape-shifting 
in this way, often choosing to fly as dragons and gryphons, while Moloch prefer the form of larger birds of prey, such as vultures or eagles. The ball most often transmogrify into owls or ravens. A sample of shed dragon skin. I collected this specimen of dragon skin and attempting to catch a balio in the Far East. Naturally, I was unable to destroy this vampire until it had shifted out of its dragon guise. Let's have a look at the next page. Vampires of all bloodlines use their ability to shapeshift into much smaller creatures as a means of either disguise or escape. Taking the form of innocuous songbirds or scurrying mice will allow them to spy on their chosen or escape from difficult situations. There are many tales of vampires surprised during a feed who supposedly vanished into thin air. The most likely have been transformed into mice or even moss and slipped away unseen. Vampires also take the form of snakes, spiders or creatures likely to induce terror amongst humans especially those suffering from phobias. Hunting Vampires take a great pleasure in hunting in the shape of larger animal predators. Balliol prefer cat forms such as leopards and jaguars, while Moloch have been known to use the bear and dog forms. As has been stated, Baal of most often choose to take the shape of owls. It is important to note that vampires do not need to shapeshift in order to catch prey. They do not they do it purely for the enjoyment that can be obtained when occupying such a majestic eagle or a large bird. This is a vampire. A vampire in shape-shifting form. A vampire dives towards its prey in the form of a bald eagle. Oh, spiders. I don't like spiders. A vampire posing as a clutter of spiders will scare even the most courageous protector. I don't think I blame them. I don't think I like spiders. It would scare me. Let's have a look under the these letters. Oh. What have we got here? of vampires. These have been sh shifted into snow leopards and a jaguar. Fight over the choice of its prey. So even the vampires can sometimes fight each other from the looks of it. The limitations of shape shifting. <laughs> so read this bit. Shape-shifting does not come without limitations. Vampires who take the form of smaller creatures, such as mice or spiders, 
experience extreme discomfort and cannot maintain this disguise for more than a few hours, though they can remain in larger form for up to two days. It is important to note that vampires cannot be destroyed while they're shape-shifting in their shape-shifting forms. If hurt, they must return to their natural state within a few hours. Some final points on shape-shifting. The notion that, vamp that a vampire can disguise itself in a cloud of mist is an old wives' tale. Vampires' powers of mind control can leave humans attesting to creatures who fade into the mist. This is a trick of the mind, and not the body. There is no evidence that the fallen can take on this form. It should be noted, also noted that vampires cannot take the form of other humans, for which we should be very thankful. Although many fallen ones are so adept at disguise and mimicry that they may, may appear to have transformed, it is not by supernatural means. Big bug. I think though maybe for today we'll leave it at that. Maybe I might come back another time and perhaps do another book and another reading session with you all. It is my first proper time of doing this, so I hope you enjoy this. But of that, I think I'll leave it. But thank you very much for joining me in this session today. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. So for now, I'll say goodbye to you all.